Okay. Good morning, children. Now let us continue with the lesson nutrition in animals. In the last class, I have taken you digestive system in human beings. Isn't it? In that we have learned how the food passes through the various compartments of the body. Okay. First, the food passes enters into the buccal cavity. Buccal cavity means mouth. In the mouth, you have tongue, teeth, and saliva. Salivary glands. Then we have studied the. After that, the food passes to the food pipe. From food pipe to the stomach. From stomach to the small intestine. From small intestine to large intestine. And from large intestine, rectum, and then anus. Like this, digestion takes place. So some of the this liver we have studied, but I have not told you what is liver. So now liver. Here you have the definitions. What I have sent you already. In the PDF notes. So liver. What is liver? Liver is a reddish brown gland which is situated in the upper part of the abdomen on the right side. Liver is the largest gland in our body. And next we have to study about the gallbladder. So this liver secretes the bile juice which is stored in the sac, like called that is called as the gallbladder. Then what is absorption? The digestion takes place undergoes four processes. That is, first one is absorption, assimilation, digestion, all this process. So what is absorption? The food from the blood vessels goes into the wall of the intestine. So there the food is absorbed. So complete digestion takes place in the small intestine. Then villi. What are these villi? Villi are the finger like projections which are present in the inner walls of the small intestine. There are thousands of finger like projections in the inner wall of the small intestine. Those are called as villi. Okay, the next is ejection. So I told you four processes that is absorption, digestion, assimilation and ejection. These are the four processes in the digestive system. So what is ejection? Ejection means Fecal matter is removed through the anus from time to time. Means the waste materials are removed from the body from time to time. This is known as, this process is known as ejection. So these are the definitions which was left out in the last class. I have explained you. Liver, gallbladder, absorption, villi and ejection. Okay. Now let us study today about the Digestion in grass eating animals. We are studied up in the human beings. Now let us study in the animals. Okay. Okay. Now I said we are studied about digestion in human beings. Now let us study about digestion in grass eating animals. So already I have sent you this definition. What is rumen? What is curd? What is rumination? What is ruminant and cellulose? Okay. So now first. What is rumen? Rumen means the animals will store whatever the grass is. You might have seen animals depend on what? On others for their food. So what they eat? Some eat the grass and all. So what they do? They store it in their stomach. So that part is called as rumen. Okay. Then curd. What is curd? You might have seen the animals continuously chewing. Cow, buffalo and all. They be continuously eating you see. But how they eat? For what they eat? What they do? Whatever grass they eat. They store it in their stomach and again they go on chewing it. So that is called as curd. So food gets partially digested. That is called as a curd. Then what is rumination? Rumination means the food what they eat from the mouth it becomes a small lumps and they will be chewing. That is called as a rumination. Ruminants. So these animals which we eat in this way and they store their food and eat whenever they are free. That is called as a ruminant. So these animals are called as ruminants. And there is one more, uh, this thing, cellulose. What are cellulose? Cellulose is a carbohydrate which is present in some animals. And here this bacteria is present which will help to digest the cellulose. So all these animals, they have the cellulose so they are able to digest it. But we human beings does not have the cellulose so we cannot Digest it. So digestion in grass, so, digestion in grass eating animals here like this the digestion takes place. These are the process. Rumen, curd, rumination, ruminants and cellulose. So already I have sent you this PDF so that you will read and know the terms. So now let us understand this digestion in grass eating animal, how it takes place. 
through the smart board. Okay. Okay. Now I said you digestion in grass eating animals. Let us see the smart board. Digestion in grass eating animals. In this module, you will learn. In grass eating animals, also called ruminants. Digest digestion in grass eating animals. In this module, you will learn. How digestion takes place in grass eating animals, also called ruminants. Digestion is the process in which complex food particles are broken down into smaller components. Though digestion is almost the same in all mammals, it is slightly different in grass eating animals. Let us find out how. Grass eating animals have a specialized digestive system composed of a stomach with four chambers. The four chambers rule reticulum, omasum and epomasum help in digestion. Because of the presence of rumen, a specialized sac-like storage chamber, these animals are also called ruminants. Let us learn about the four chambers in detail. Children, you don't have so much in detail here. You have only about ruminants only that will Reticulum. The reticulum is a flask like structure connected to the esophagus at its one end and continues to the lumen from the other end. It helps in passing ingested food from the lumen to the mouth and vice versa. The animals are chewing. Rumen. The rumen lies next to the reticulum. It is a sac like structure lined with projections known as rumen papillae. The rumen possesses many microbes such as bacteria and fungi that help in the fermentation of re-ingested food. Omasum The omasum has... Evomasum The evomasum is... Rumors mainly in plants and plant parts. They eat rapidly without chewing and store the food temporarily in the rumen. Plants and plant parts primarily consist of cellulose which constitutes plant cell wall. Cellulose in general cannot be digested by other mammals including humans. Once ruminants finish eating, They bring up to the mouth the ingested food for chewing. This process of bringing food up from the stomach to mouth is known as rumination. So what is rumination? The process of bringing food up from the stomach to the mouth is called rumination. The process of rumination is necessary as ruminants 
are not able to digest cellulose directly due to the lack of cellulase enzyme. But they have microbes in their rumen which secrete an enzyme called cellulase that helps in digestion of cellulose. During rumination, the already ingested food or cut is softened by the action of enzymes present in the rumen. The cut then passes to the reticulum. From the reticulum, food passes back to the mouth. In the mouth, the cup mixes with the saliva and moves back again into the reticulum. From the reticulum, the chewed food then passes to the omasum. Here it is grinded by the line of the wall of the omasum. Lastly, the grounded food, after remaining for a while in the omasum, reaches the last portion of the stomach, the abomasum. Here, enzymes like pepsin and hydrochloric acid act on the food and help in its digestion. From the abomasum, the food then travels to the intestines. In the intestines, nutrients and water are absorbed from the food and the wastes pass out from the body through the anus. In this module you have learned, ruminants are grass-eating animals. The digestive system of ruminants consists of four parts, namely rumen, reticulum, omasum and abomasum. The process of bringing back a food from the human to the mouth is called rumination. So this is about the digestion in grass eating animals. We have seen the human digestive system and the grass eating animals. Now let us study about digestion in amoeba. Amoeba does not have a mouth or a digestive system but still how it digests its food that we are going to see. Okay. Ingestion and digestion in amoeba. In this module you will learn. So here we are going to learn about how amoeba will ingest and stay in food and digest the food. This is amoeba. So what is amoeba? We have studied in the last class. Amoeba is a microscopic organism that also needs the food. So let us see how it takes in food and digests. So all the organisms obtain energy by taking food in food from their surroundings. So these are microorganisms. So how they have to take the food? From their surroundings they take the food. What is the shape of the amoeba? It is shapeless. Can you see? one cell that helps it to perform all vital functions. Ingestion is the act of taking. Amoeba is a microscopic. I told you amoeba is a microscopic organism. Means which we cannot see through our eyes. You can see only through the microscope. And it is single cell. Single cell means it has only one cell for all the functions of the 
body we have many cells so we are called multicellular organisms so single cell of amoeba performs the functions like locomotion movement digestion everything so now let us study about how digestion takes place in amoeba so ingestion ingestion is the act of taking food into the body already this process you know taking in of food is called as ingestion and digestion in amoeba in this module you will learn how amoeba ingests and digests food all organisms unicellular or multicellular obtain energy by taking in food from their surroundings multicellular organisms have specialized organs for digestion Unicellular organisms like amoeba in contrast do not have such specialized organs but can still carry out digestion Before we find out how amoeba carries out digestion let us briefly learn about amoeba Amoeba is a microscopic unicellular organism with no definite shape Unicellular means single cell so amoeba has only one cell that helps it to perform all vital functions such as locomotion ingestion digestion excretion and respiration let us now find out how amoeba carries out ingestion and digestion ingestion is the act of taking food into the body Since amoeba lacks a mouth or other organelles for ingestion, it captures food using specialized structures called pseudopodia. Pseudopodia are finger-like cytoplasmic extrusions that are temporarily formed on the body of amoeba at the point where it comes in contact with food. Pseudopodia is formed when it sees the food, when it comes in contact of the food. As amoeba senses food, it extends its pseudopodia to form a cup-like structure around the food particles to engulf them, called food vacuole. so food particles along with the food will form what food vacuole this also definition was there what already i sent you various digestive enzymes are then released into the food vacuole the digestive enzymes break down the food particles in some the vacuole into simpler substances which are then absorbed In this module you have learned amoeba is a unicellular organism its single cell helps it to carry out vital functions such as locomotion ingestion digestion respiration and excretion amoeba does not have a mouth for ingestion so it captures food using temporary finger like projections called pseudopodia The capture of food along with water forms a food vacuole inside the body of amoeba. 
The food inside the vacuole is broken down by digestive enzymes into simpler substances which are then absorbed. So we have studied about digestion in the grass eating animals and ingestion and digestion of amoeba, how it takes in food. Now there is another, this thing, ORS solution, already you know this, what is ORS solution? Whenever children suffer from diarrhea and all, dehydration and all, they give the ORS solution, isn't it? So how they prepare that ORS solution, let us see. Oral rehydration solution. In this module you will learn how to prepare oral rehydration solution. Nutrients are substances in food that keep the body alive, growing and healthy. Different kinds of food give us different nutrients. If these nutrients are lost due to disease conditions, the scarcity of these nutrients can threat the very existence of life. So already I have said about the nutrients, how important they are to our body. If any one nutrient also is not present in our food, then we have to will have the health problem. So nutrients are the substances in food that will keep the body alive, growing and healthy. Different kinds of food gives us different nutrients. Oral rehydration solution is a good and easy method of providing the lost nutrients to the patient, particularly those suffering from diarrhea. For preparing this life-saving solution, take a clean container and put one level teaspoon of common salt. This is your in your lower classes also how to prepare this ORS solution. For what they give this ORS solution? The person who is suffering from diarrhea. Diarrhea means what? Continuously watery motion will be there. So they feel uneasy, glucose won't be there in their body and also to avoid all those things, weakness and all, they give this ORS solution. So what you have to do first, you have to take a clean container and put one level teaspoon of salt. What all is needed for this? Common salt, sugar and sodium bicarbonate. So you have to take water first. In that you have to add one teaspoon of salt. Then add one level teaspoon of sodium bicarbonate. Now add 8 full teaspoons of sugar. So sugar is how much? 8 full teaspoon of sugar. Add 1 litre of oil and cook water. Thoroughly stir the contents to make the solution. The oral rehydration solution is ready. Let's summarize what you have learned in this module. Oral rehydration solution helps in regaining the important nutrients lost due to disease, particularly diarrhea. Materials needed for its preparation are 1 litre of boiled and cooled water, common salt, sodium bicarbonate and sugar. Effect of saliva on starch. In this module, you will learn about the effect of saliva on. So, here in 
in this experiment, we will see the effect of saliva on the starch. Already I learned in 6th standard about the test for starch, test for carb or carbohydrate, for the proteins, for the fats and also for the iodine. All these tests you have learned. So now let us see effect of saliva on starch. Do you know that boiled rice is partially digested in our mouth? The rice contains starch and saliva from our mouth acts on the starch. Let us conduct an activity that confirms that saliva acts on the starch in our mouth. So every day we eat rice, isn't it? Where you will have the stickiness, in that you will have the starch. For example, potato, then rice and all. So now let us study about how the starch is present in the rice. By testing. So first what we have taken? Rice, boiled rice. To learn about it, you need a few test tubes, some boiled rice, iodine solution, a dropper and water. So what are the required items for this test? First we need the test tubes. Can you see these are the test tubes? Then this is the boiled rice, dropper, iodine solution and water. Take two test tubes and mark them as A and B. To the test tube A, add one teaspoonful of boiled rice. Now choose a teaspoonful of rice for 3 to 5 minutes. After chewing, add the chewed rice into the test tube B. Add a little water to both the test tubes. Add a few drops of iodine solution to both the test tubes and observe. So in both you are taking the rice only, but in one you are taking directly only rice and another mm. one you are chewing it for a few minutes and taking that rice. So it is mixed with the saliva inside the mouth. And after that what you are adding? Little bit of water and the iodine solution. See, the color of the rice in test tube A changed into blue black. There is no change in color in the test tube B. So what did you see in this? In the test tube A, in which we had put directly the rice, there the color changes blue black and where you have already chewed for a few minutes with the saliva, there the color has not changed. Rice is a good source of starch. In test tube A, boiled rice was kept that gave blue black color with iodine solution due to presence of starch. In test tube B, the rice was kept that was mixed with the saliva while chewing. There was no change in color of rice in the test tube B when iodine solution was added. The saliva contains digestive enzyme amylase that helps in the breakdown of starch into sugars and hence the rice in the test tube B does not contain starch. So here what is the reaction? Saliva is what? It is a amylase. The starch is what? Rice. Plus what we have added? Iodine solution. So there is no color change. So here this shows there is a starch present in the boiled rice. In this part you will have learned, saliva digests the starch present in our food in the mouth while chewing. So through this experiment what we have studied, saliva will digest the starch which is present in our food in the mouth while chewing. Different regions of taste in the tongue. Diagram shown different regions of taste in the tongue. So we have studied already about the tongue, but different regions of taste in our tongue. Let us see this. We are able to 
talk with the tongue, you are able to taste. But where are the regions where you will see the So children, we have studied in this chapter in nutrition in animals about the digestion in human beings and digestion in grass eating animals as well as digestion in amoeba, that is microscopic organism. Okay, now here we have finished this chapter. So about the tongue I was showing you but in the next class I will show you. Okay, so write the notes, learn the definitions. In this chapter, you have many keywords where you have to learn. Okay, read and pronounce the words correctly. Every day, 10 10 words, uh, keywords at least, you all learn the definitions and spell the spellings and learn it. Okay, thank you.